being a Rotarian is now even more rewarding. The good you do comes back to you. Rotary Global Rewards. Good afternoon and welcome to the Rotary Club of Tulsa. That's probably only the second time in history the bell has been rung by a butter knife because probably Catherine stole my mallet. So we'll, we'll get to the bottom of that before long. This is a club where a bunch of good people come together in a great community and do great things here and around the world. Before everybody gets settled in, why don't you turn to somebody you haven't greeted yet today and give them a handshake and a big hi. All right, so let's get started this morning. Our invocation today is by Norm Simon. Song and Pledge is by past president Corey Nickerson. And visitors are by past president Karen Keith, if she's in the house. Now for invocation, Norm. Please bow your heads. Dear God, we come to you to ask your help in embracing our differences and our commonalities our various talents, our backgrounds, our occupations, our dreams. We know that when you created each of us, you broke the mold. No one is exactly like anyone else. Even our thumbprints and our voice tracks tell us how unique we each are. We ask you to help us take these differences in our shared attributes and mobilize them for the good of our community and the good of Rotary. As we meet together, we can think the same thoughts and move towards a common goal. Thank you for our individuality and for our common bond. Amen. And we've learned something else about Rotary. The best way to lose control of a room is to tell a bunch of Rotarians to turn around and shake hands. <laughs> wow, that was pretty good. Right. It, it, it did all right. Let's sing America the Beautiful. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of grain, for purple mountain majesties above the fruited plain, America, America, God shed his grace on thee. And crown thy good with brotherhood From sea to shining sea And I scratched my head a lot today. Ladies, if you can come up with a word for brotherhood that is more inclusive, please let me know. Let's do the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'll invite past president Rhonda Renz up to do our guests. Hello everybody, I just got recruited. So I'm winging this, all right. We have some visitors with us today. Let's see if I can read the writing. Roger uh, Ramsire. Oh, thanks, John. Sit down. With Gordon Greer, please stand. Welcome. Jeff Bender with Rob Walters. Welcome. Janice Devaro with Tiffany Edgedorf. Please stand. You did? Welcome. All right, those are the visitors. Clap. All right, we have two visiting Rotarians. 
Michael Phillips and Harlan Pinkerton. Oh, you're supposed to say hi, Michael. Hi, Harlan. And um, Michael said it is the worst club in 6110. Is that what you said? Oh, I'm sorry. The best club. But, you know, I had to change that up a little bit. Well, welcome visitors and, and Rotarians. There you go. Now, I'm very partial to the Sand Sp Springs Club, so welcome very much. I hope everybody liked our tailgate food today. This is one of the coolest uh, weeks of the year for a lot of us uh, men and women. I'm very excited that Rick Corey is with us today. Um, this is the week that every football team is perfect and all of their goals are still intact. So as of now, OU had a perfect season. OSU has a perfect season. They're both going to play for the national championship. TU is going to win the AAC and go to a major bowl. And I heard a rumor Kansas would win a Big 12 game this year. <laughs> I really can't wait to hear from Rick in a moment. Sorry I didn't throw a Baylor thing in there, but I couldn't think of anything honorable to say. <clears throat> For a little sneak peek of our upcoming programs, check out the screens. On September the 7th, Ken Busby... He will be here to talk about the past, present, and future of Route 66 through Tulsa. There's going to be a uh, surprise. It's not a surprise. I'm going to tell you, but we're going to have classic cars under the veranda in the back. So if you hear the whole, whole building rumble, it's not an earthquake. It's probably a Ford Mustang 65 with a 289 in it. On September the 14th, we're going to have Sean Latham from the University of Tulsa. He's going to talk to us about the Bob Dylan archive. And on September the 21st, we're going to have a very unique program. We're going to be introduced to a thing that goes on under our nose that most of us don't know about, and it's called Concours for the Cure. And on that day, we're going to have a bunch of really classic cars under the veranda. So as you think about inviting somebody to Rotary, you've got cars and rock and roll. What else do you need? So be sure and mark your calendars and invite those people. Our sponsors today are Stan McCabe and Charles Seacrest from Key Personnel, Catherine DeCamp from Oklahoma Innovative Institution, Tim Lyons from TTCU, and I'm looking at the screen. Is that everybody? Rod? Oh, Southern Hills. I'm sorry, I didn't get that one, so be sure and acknowledge all of our sponsors. We thank them very much for their support. It's now my pleasure to invite Michael Burks and his crew forward for a very special presentation about our recent IBA Awards event. Michael? Thank you, John. Well, I uh, just wanted to give you a report on the final tally for the IBA Awards, but before I do, um, I want to thank the committee members that probably felt like they were following the blind this year, but... Uh, they did a great job and we appreciate it. Would you all stand up if you worked on the IBO Awards? <laughs> so this year, after expenses, we raised $89,000. And we have distributed $5,000 of that to high school citizen athletes, something we added this year. And today, uh, we are going to distribute $24,000 to our local charities that we uh, picked. And so I'm gonna turn that over to John Delavadova. Thank you very much. On behalf of your community service director for 2015 and 16, it was an honor to serve. And I want to present two checks today on behalf of the Club Foundation Grant Committee under Bill Richards' leadership, the Rotary Club of Tulsa Foundation Trustees. It's my pleasure to present a check to Gene Winfrey with the Little Lighthouse Executive Director for $12,000.
thank you, thank you so very much. On behalf of all of our Little Lighthouse families and staff and board, we cannot express enough the deep appreciation we have for you as Rotarians. You all have been with us for as long as I've been involved, and that's 40 years. We're getting ready to celebrate 44 years. And yes, we have officially moved into our new building at 36th and Yale. You are all invited to come and visit us, stop by or schedule a tour for your groups or whoever. And I'm going to go ahead and have them start a video because I just thought from the view of a teacher, you would have a little bit different perspective. My name is Kimberly Carter. I'm 24 years old and from Dallas, Texas. I went to college with the idea of doing my master's in special ed and I started working for a family there. They have a young man named Luke with autism and just help him be a part of the family. And I just loved seeing what these little interventions and supports just change the lives of the families as well as the individuals with special needs. This school does so much for the families and the kids. When they come here, you know, they aren't just getting to go to school or going to a daycare, you know, they're getting education, peer interaction, therapies from their teachers, and they don't realize that they're doing all that. It's play. This school, it changes the lives of our volunteers, of our donors, of anyone who walks in our doors. The parents and the kids, they just teach me so much about what's important in life what really matters and where to find joy. I am so excited about the new building. As you can see, my classroom is not very large. Um, and that's just with us in here right now. And when you bring in my 10 children and all of their equipment and their movement and energy, we quickly run out of room. For the first time, they're gonna get to walk into this multi-million dollar building and know that this is for them. And you know, we just want the parents to know like this is for them too. We love their children so much. We're not just gonna build them a small building. You know, we're building this huge building that's a light on the hill that's for everyone to see these amazing kids and allow them to be a light for our whole Tulsa community as well as around the world. And once again, on behalf of the Club Foundation and Grants and the Rotary Club of Tulsa Foundation trustees, it's my pleasure to present a check to Adrian DeWent, the Special Olympics CEO and President, a check for $12,000. Thank you. Well, a special thank you to Michael and Dana Burks, co-chairs of this year's IBO Awards, and the entire committee, and a special thank you to the Tulsa Rotary Club Board of Directors that uh, supported uh, Special Olympics through this great gift. I just have to tell you real quickly, we had an athlete, a Special Olympics athlete from here in Tulsa, uh, that was recognized with the Henry P. Iba Chairman's Award this year at the Iba Awards Banquet. Special Olympics Oklahoma, what we do is we change lives. That's basically what we do. We're in the life-changing business, changing communities all across this great state, and uh, educating folks about all that individuals with intellectual disabilities can do, how they overcome their disabilities daily. This Rotary Club and the IBA Awards Banquet changed Amy Wilmerhauser and her family's life earlier this year when they presented her the Chairman's Award. So on behalf of our organization, thank you so much for your support of Special Olympics Oklahoma. There's 140 events that take place across the state and about 40 that take place right here in Tulsa County. So don't hesitate to get involved. We need all the volunteers we can get. Thank you so much and God bless. Thank you very much, Michael and uh, the whole committee. And I, I gotta tell you, if you've never been to an IBA event or never served on the committee of IBA, get on DACDB today, sign up for the committee. This is an outstanding program. We should be very proud of it. It's a class act and it's a blast to be a part of. So as we start to announce IBA's coming on later in the year or we start calling out for committees, get involved. We can put everybody in the club to work for IBA and make it a great event next year. So again, let's thank everybody that worked so hard this past year for the IBA. Give them a round of applause.
Now I'd like to call up my uh, Sergeant of Arms, Kathy DeCamp. Um, Catherine, what mischief, I know I did it on purpose, what mischief do you have in store for us today? You know, it's, it's, always, it's always fun when I get up here, but the first thing I want to say is let's bring back seersucker suits, okay? Because I freeze to death every week because you guys are out here wearing wool suits, so seersucker, <laughs> keep that in mind. What is that? It, it's a fabric, you're too young. So... Okay, well, let's get on with this. Lots of exciting things today. So we're going to start out with... Whoa. Okay, so our first find today is our friend Matt Davis. And Matt said that he sent this photo with his lovely wife, Becky, and his handsome son, Matt, because he thought it would make him look good. So do we agree? Does that make him look good? No. Okay. Okay. Matt, Matt. Will you come up here, please? Come, come on. Uh-oh. I, I want to see if I make him look good. Oh. No. He got, I think the he got shoes. Lots of, he got lots of hate out there. So don't you guys love Matt? Really? She'll always make anybody look good. Oh. Okay, wait, wait, wait. So, so I got this email. Okay, I got an email for another find today. Okay. So let's, let's look at the find. Oh, wait. Matt oh. Davis, surprise. Oh, so, Matthew and Meredith paid a fine for you, but I have to read something to you. Okay. So, can we cut the slides so we can have the video on our friend Matt? Get on over here, pal. Okay. Cuddle up. Okay. <laughs> this is from Matthew. You can't read with me. Oh. Just look at the audience. He's told me. Come on. <laughs> look at the audience. My father is the most influential male figure in my life, and nothing has been a better showcase of the values he has and the values he wishes to instill in us than the Rotary Club of Tulsa and his commitment to it. I won't say how old he is as of yesterday, but we would like to make a donation of $61 <laughs> for yeah. all the love he has shown us, the guidance he's given us, and the support he has provided us every day of my life. Happy birthday, Dad. Love, Matthew and Meredith. Wow. Yeah. So please be sure you give my email address to your children because, <laughs> you know, I, this is my job, people, okay? I'm supposed to get fines, so, so send, me, send me some fines. All right, back to the slides. Joanne, first Joanne Miller. Bless her heart, without even being fined, she walked up to me last week and gave me a check because her phone went off. So, be Joanne. If your phone goes <laughs> off, all right, if your phone goes off, bring me a check, all right? I shouldn't have to fine you. Bring me a check or turn off your phone. Those are your choices. All right, so thank you very much, Joanne, for doing that. Okay, where's Bob say? Bob, oh, he's right in front of me. Okay, this is a man who walks around with a wad of $20 bills. <laughs> so, but I wanted to just give a Sarge salute to Bob Sade because Bob always has my back. If something's coming up and we announce something, Bob's behind me with the $20 bill. Well, last week when I opened my mouth and said something to the effect of, everybody bring a dollar, and if you bring 95 cents, I'll pay the nickel, and then somebody said, everybody bring 95 cents. <laughs> Bob walked up after the meeting, he's like, uh, Catherine here, I have a feeling you're not going to be able to cover this, so here's 20 for your... <laughs> so I think everybody brought a dollar, though, so we're just going to donate this to Rotary International. But thank you, Bob, for always being there and, and getting my back. All right. Now, is Mr. Ed here today? Because, man, I was scouting all over the place for him. He's not. You should encourage Mr. Ed to always be here, because if Mr. Ed isn't here, guess who's auctioning the tickets? Yeah, that's right. So we're going to try it out today and see how this works. So <laughs> the slides could go back up. Thanks, guys, for that. No. Okay, now I can do this. I feel confident I can do this. Okay, so we're going to start out with OSU tickets for the second home game, Central Michigan, September 10th. I need everybody to remember these are 50-yard line seats. They come with a gold lot parking pass. Um, 
the value of the tickets, you know, I'm just going to say the, the ticket price is two fifty dollars for each ticket. So, so you guys need to be thinking about that. I mean, even if you don't go to the game, give them to a client. How impressive is that to hand them, you know, hand them the tickets? So, okay, so with that, for the next game, let's start out with, who wants to give me the starting bid? I can do this, I promise. Oh, who said that? Yeah, you can yeah, help, Okay, Barney. please help me. Okay, so a bee bitty bee bitty bee bitty bee two hundred and fifty. A ba ba da ba da ba da ba da two twenty-five clients, money, bee bitty bitty bitty. Come on guys, come on guys. This could go on a long time. All right, we're at two hundred. What's the current bid? Hundred dollars. No. Is it hundred? Come on guys, come on. Just 200. It's 200 right now. Who's got Come on, two? Give us 225. OSU. OSU, client, gift, impressive. 225. Come on, guys. Come on. Hey, this, wait, we only, we don't have all day. Give us some money. Now we're doing, we're doing OU after this. Don't okay, let them go for OU more money. This. Okay. Anybody, 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 bee, 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 bee. Okay. <laughs> This is not, this is, uh, this is uncool. This is like the uncoolest thing I think I've ever done. And it's I, on tape. In my mind, in my mind, I looked so much better, okay? <laughs> so this is reality hitting. So what do we have? 200, who, who said 200? Barney's for two. Hey, listen, don't try to keep from hurting his feelings. We need money. Come on. Oh, here we go. Okay, 225. All right. Anybody else? B -b -d -b -d -b -d -b -d. No? 250. Okay. All right. We're going to call it Jerry. 225. Once. Jerry, is it you? Jan. Jan and Jerry. Always. Okay. All right. So the winner is Jan for 225. Thank you, ma'am. All right. Sheesh. Okay, let's have the slide for OU. Guys, help me out here, okay? This is OU. All right, oh, beep, boop. Oh. All right, are we all pushing at the same? Brad and I are all pushing, where's it? Okay, September 10th, ULM Warhawks. Wait a second, I haven't started yet. <laughs> okay, all right, who do, who's gonna be my starting bid? Starting bid. Who was it, 200? Okay, a oh, Matt, okay, Matt. Matt, B B D B D B D B two twenty five. Somebody, come on. O U O U O U two twenty five. And I, it, it, people, I got, I gotta tell you, how much? Okay, <laughs> people, we can see you. Okay, you're not hiding back there. Raise your hands. Just a second, I'm gonna tell you where the seats are. Okay, uh, Rick. Rick, I'm sorry. I swear this wasn't supposed to take this long. Okay. Um, this is section 12, row 71, seat 19 and 20. You know what? <laughs> they, they really are. These are rotary seats, people. Okay, so where are we? Where are we? Two what? We're at 200, looking for 225. 200, b b d two what? Come on, come on, Sooners. Okay, I don't want to hear any more of this Sooner pride. If you guys are not proud enough to pay 250, you have no pride. Any other time we can't shut down, you fans. I know, I know, exactly. Okay. So what do we have? We're at 200. 200. Let's, let's call okay, it. Okay, we got to stop this now, guys. Is anybody, you know, help us out? We're bleeding up here. Okay, it's, this is. We're bleeding sooner red or crimson or whatever that whole saying is. Okay. We okay. Have now. Are we gonna go with 200? Who won that? We got Who's 200 with Matt. Matt. Thank you, Matt. Birthday boy. Okay. So one last thing. Somebody told me, Brad, Brad told me that, that he had a pair of scissors and you have an OU tie and that you had agreed that we could auction off the slicing of your tie. Is that true? I don't think I agreed to that. <laughs> Okay, so we have $100 over here. A what? Bee -bee 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 -bee. Uh, come, 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 come. Hey, if you want to keep the time, You're going to cut my time? It only cost you like three bucks. I already heard. 
This is an expensive tie. Okay, a hundred dollars. A hundred dollars. Anybody oh want to pay more than a hundred dollars? Come on, Ed, guys. Ed, outbid them and don't cut it. OSU, this is your opportunity. <laughs> hey, whoever bids gets to cut. Okay, so OSU fans, this is your chance. OU, a hundred bucks. He won't cut my tie. You won't cut the tie. You mean if I bid higher? That's a great idea. <laughs> okay. All right, here we go. Anybody higher than 100? Because Brad's getting ready. Oh, okay. Oh. All right. Well, I, I think we'll, I think we're uh -oh. going to. Wait. <gasps> <laughs> Holy cow. Man, I'm going to go out and buy like a dozen of those $3 ties. <laughs> Okay, so 125 from Brad to cut it. Anybody else want to save save that tie? Wait, Tim, what do you got? What? 150 to cut or Tim, save? Tim, we're friends. Cut or save? <laughs> oh God. Okay, 150. Is... <laughs> 150, Tim. You want to do it? Okay, let me give you a little background on this tie. <laughs> I bought it on sale. Here it is. Okay. Yeah. At Eskimo Joe's for three dollars. All right. No, no, my dad gave it. I mean, this is like it's no, at least no, worth two hundred dollars. No, no, you are not going to go there. You are not going to go there. We don't. Let's lie. move it along. We got to go. We got four questions here. Okay. So one, one fifty for Tim. Tim, you kind of come cut it. One fifty-one to save the time. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah, bow tie would have been a bad call. All right, so we're going to do 151 to save the tie. Everybody applaud for our saving the tie. Oh no. <laughs> it's your good friend. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you all so much for your attention. Well, I appreciate that. I would have looked a little funny on the screens without a tie. We have a committee meeting today. It's International Projects in Room 232. A couple of announcements. Um, do you have five names in your pocket of Rotarians you're trying to recruit that would wear an OU tie? And have you thought about asking them to Rotary next week? Uh, I'm going to reflect back on our next uh, three upcoming programs. If you know somebody that likes cars or rock and roll, take one of those five names. There will be somebody on there that likes both and invite them to Rotary next week. Our Diversity and Inclusion Committee invites you to join them on Thursday, September 15th at 6.30 to hear from four members of the nine-member Tulsa delegation. They're co-sponsored by the Tulsa Historical Society and they'll be speaking about their participation in the joint governance, governance of Human Society Conference that was held in Switzerland. The delegation chair, John W. Franklin, son of the late Dr. John Hope Franklin, We'll open the forum by giving the background of the conference and why the Tulsa delegates were selected. The event lasts for about an hour and will include Q&A. So see you there. Now I'd like to introduce our Rotarian of the Day, Brandy Bynum. Brandy joined Rotary just a few months ago, actually one month plus ago in July, and is part of our newest class number three. She joined... Um, New, New what? New View, Oklahoma. New View, Oklahoma. I had a typo, I'm sorry. New View, Oklahoma, and works as regional director and joined them in 2015. She is an active, or uh, a native Oklahoman with four boys and is very active in her community, which is Tulsa. A uh, little funny tidbit about uh, Brandy. At the ripe age of 18, she got in her brain that she was extremely funny and that she could try out for Joker's Comedy Club. She went and tried out at the age of 18. You're not allowed to do that until you're 21. She got a spot and did several performances before she was busted. So <laughs> please help me welcome Rotarian of the Day, Brandy Bynum. Thank you, John, and hello, Rotary. I am so th thrilled that you guys asked me to be here today, and I just am super excited about the guests that we have. Many of you may not have actually ever met Rick in person, but probably feel like you already know him since he has been coming into your homes and your cars from KRMG 
for over a quarter of a century. So he has brought us updates and, and rundowns of our favorite sports teams. He's kept us informed on <clears throat> devastating events in our state with weather. He has brought us triumphs and tragedies, covering everything from the Olympics to the World Series to 9-11. He started off at KRMG as an evening overnight board operator and now has made it to the managing editor of the news. And with that experience, he is using that knowledge, talent, and influence to also impact our community. He is very involved in Operation Aware, and he is just a strong champion for their cause, and he's helped them raise over $1.3 million. So we thank you for that. Now, I was trying to do a little bit of research to kind of beef up on my sports lingo, and I think that someone may have made an error on his bio, because they said that he was the color commentator, color analyst for teams like TU football, TU basketball, and Union. But after I watched video after video after video, I did not hear him comment or analyze the color of the uniforms at all. <laughs> so, fortunately for all of you, he is far more versed in the world of sports and he is gonna bring you some stories and experiences that he's gotten to have over the vast time that he's had in his career. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce to you Rick Corey. First of all, I'm, very ex I'm really excited that you cheated to get that spot at the comedy club because there's an old athletic director friend of mine said, if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. So <laughs> I appreciate that. I also appreciate you asking me to come here because I've been in radio for 34 years and I still am amazed that anybody cares about anything I say. I, I live at home with a wife and two daughters and they don't give a whistle what I say at any point. <laughs> Never have. Actually, two daughters now because I have a sophomore at Texas A&M, so you can say anything you want about Baylor. As a matter of fact... <laughs> At Texas a they call TCU Purple Baylor, which I think is funny. Um, anything you'd like. So, um, they, you know, they, they, when they first asked me to come here, oh, wait, first of all, I've got to do this, because no one will believe that I'm actually here. You know, the people I work with, is, I told them I was going to go speak to somebody, and they went, sure you are. So if everybody else scooch together, can you move in just a little? There we go. Thank you. I, <laughs> this guy waved. <laughs> I didn't take the picture. No, I did believe Nice to see people. I see Rodney over there, and I know Rodney, and there's Jane and Tim Nall back there. I, actually, I'm a scuba instructor, too, and I certified Tim's entire family to dive, and I'd like you to know they're all still alive, <laughs> which, now, I don't have to bring them all back, but that costs more, and it's a special class, so we'll talk. Um, it's interesting, Brandy asked me about being in radio and what I do. I, I have done Tulsa football for 28 years, broadcast TV football, broadcast Oklahoma State football for one year, which was a trip. It was a lot of fun. How many of you here know Pat Jones? or no, of Pat Jones. Well, I'm going to tell you a story about Pat a little later on. And there's at least, where's my OSU friend? We used to wander the sidelines together. There you are, right there. Yeah, so we've been on some sidelines together before. Uh, I was the, tel the Tulsa Talents play-by-play -play guy for 10 years. Um, now I'm in my 13th year of the play-by-play -play for Union High School as well. Just was in South Lake Carroll over the weekend. But Brandy asked, she said, you know, is this what you'd always wanted to do? And it wasn't. I got into this completely by accident. I was at a benefit soccer game in 1982. And I was across from a guy who does an old-time radio show, and I love old-time radio. As a matter of fact, my boss would never want to hear me say this, but I have XM in my car, and when I, listen, when I leave the station, I listen to old-time radio. Until it storms, then I'm on the air telling you where you're about to die. So <clears throat> I'm listening to old-time radio, and, and he's across from me, and I said, hey, I've always loved your show. And he said, cool, you want to go to work for us? And I, I was working in a warehouse doing nothing, and I said, sure. And he said, come to work at 10 o'clock tonight. So I went to 14th and Boulder, in the old location of KRMG, I worked for a week before I bumped into the general manager in the hallway. He said, who are you? And I said, I'm your overnight guy. He said, no, you're not. And I said, yeah, I am. And so we, anyway, they hired me. And so, well, currently, I was the fat guy in the spot. I mean, <laughs> and I remember the first night on the air there, I kept playing these sound effects on the air because I didn't know they were going on the air. And John Erling, how many of you know John? I mean, yeah, 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 unfortunately, sorry. Um, and John walked in at 5.30 in the morning, and I was sitting there, and he said, what are you doing? And I said, I'm pushing this button. He said, well, stop. It sounds stupid. And that's, that's how I met John. And you know what? I, 
did more hours on the air with John than anybody else in history, and that never changed. <laughs> it was the way it was when he left. He, I left. When he left the station that last day, he said, you still sound stupid. And that's probably true. Uh, as Brandy said, I've had a very unique career in that I was, in, I was a solid sports guy for 28, 29 years. And then a few years ago, KRMG eliminated sports. And the reason we eliminated sports are these. Because now you don't have to wait for sports casts, you don't have to wait for scores, you don't have to wait for any of that, and you wouldn't. You wouldn't wait until 10 after or 40 after to hear that, you'll do it right here. So they did what most places are doing that are not sports stations, and they eliminated sports altogether. And they told me, you have two really good options. One, you can move in the news. Two, we can fire you. So <clears throat> I was a little distressed. They thought the second was a good option, but I, I went with it, and I moved in the news. And since that time, I've become the managing editor, so I have covered 9-11. I stood in the middle of the F5 in Joplin and in Moore. As a matter of fact, in Moore, I was the only reporter in the world, CNN, ABC, you name it, BBC, inside the perimeter of the devastation there at Plaza Towers Elementary School. And at the same time, I have covered bowl games and World Series, and I've done all those things. And it's interesting when you go on the road with football teams, and I've done it with high school, I've done it with college, I've done it with professional guys. And if you think it's interesting, do it with a bunch of guys who get paid 200 bucks a game. And that's what the Tulsa Talons made for arena football. Did anybody here ever go to an arena game? Oh, that's about 10% of you. That's why they're gone, by the way. <laughs> I thought they were, they were great fun. And those guys, you know, anytime, whatever you did in high school or when you were younger that you were passionate about, whether it was tennis or swimming or football or basketball or baseball or track or whatever, remember the reason you first went out in the backyard and did it? Remember the first time you went outside and you guys played catch and, you know, the, you know the, the pop bottle was out of bounds and that kind of thing? That's why those guys still played the game. Because at $200 a game, you don't play it for any other reason. You play it because you love it. So you end up with a really good group of guys with a desire to play a game. And it was bizarre because of where we played. We were in Amarillo and Youngstown, Ohio and Laredo, Texas. And, you know, we, we stopped at one arena that if you had gone another 65 yards, you were in Mexico. And I'm not kidding. <laughs> if you've never been to Hidalgo and Dodge Arena, you ever go there, really, I'm, my car is in Mexico from here, <clears throat> in the parking lot from where that place is. And traveling with those dudes, I mean, at 2.30 in the morning on the way back from Youngstown, Ohio, they woke me up from the bottom bunk and sang happy birthday. Those are the kind of guys they were to travel with. But one of the most funny things that ever happened, we traveled 16 hours to Youngstown, Ohio. Now, has anybody here been to Youngstown? Other than Coach Stoops' family. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> Well, Youngstown is just south of your armpit. <clears throat> it is, um, <laughs> Youngstown's not pretty, and that's putting, that, that's putting it easily. So we pull into this, the nicest hotel in town, which was a day's in, and we pull into this day's in, and there's a big, big lobby, and there's tables and chairs out there, and it's full of people, and I thought, oh, this must be the happening place. And now these guys, again, I'm talking 19, 20, 21, 22, up to about 26-year-old athletes. Okay? And they're still in the prime of their life. And for them, going out Friday night had nothing to do with Saturday's game. This was not a thing where you had a whole lot of bed checks. Uh, they, these guys, they went and did what they wanted to do. And Saturday, they'd show up and they could play because they were young and they could do that. Um, I don't drink. I'm really, really trying to start, but I don't yet. But they did. And, um, well, some of them didn't, not since they invented the funnel. But, uh, but a few of them... <laughs> A few of them did. So we walk into this, we walk into this hotel, and it's just loaded. And we, we all go to our rooms, and I get off the bus, and Luke Phillips, our kicker from Oklahoma State, uh, gets off, and he starts following me. And someone said, where are you going? He said, I'm going wherever he's going. And they said, why? He said, he said look at him. He knows where the food is. <laughs> Guilty. So it, Luke followed me down the hall. We, we all got to our rooms, and we all decided we were going to go out that night, so we go out that night. Well, the Talents players came back to the hotel with six packs of beer and whatever it is they wanted to drink that night so they could relax, right? So you walk back into this hotel lobby, and we come to find out the hotel wasn't full. It was a weekend, it was a weekend for those who were on house arrest for alcohol and drug offenses. <laughs> <laughs> And these, these poor people are in the lobby, and these talents players come rolling in with six packs and 12 packs, and you just watch the people going, huh? <laughs> As they went by, and I, I just remember thinking I felt really bad for it. It's like taking a fat guy to a buffet and going, nope, can't. Always fun. I, I, Oklahoma State. Now, again, for those of you who know Pat Jones, you know Pat talks real fast, kind of like this right here. You know, Pat talks like this, doesn't he? It's just how Pat talks. How you doing? You get, get you on an airplane? Pat used to think it was funny. He put me on an airplane between two offensive linemen and laid about 290 pounds. And he'd come back and say, how you doing? <laughs> and as you can tell, I'm slim, right? So, Pat, we're in Missouri. 
This is the year I was there, so I think it was 93. And for those who, I'll tell you a secret, Pat Jones hates Missouri. He hates them with a passion. He probably doesn't anymore because he's, you know, he's kind of mellowed as a coach. But as a coach at Oklahoma State back then, you're supposed to beat Missouri. So if you do, you don't get any credit. And if you lose, how could you? We hated to go to Missouri. And we thought we had a pretty good team. We just lost to Arizona State in a very close game because a freshman fumbled going into the end zone. And we go to Missouri on a just dreadful day. I'm telling it's cold and it's raining and there's, it's the old field turf, you know, the old, the old turf. It's just awful. Early in the game, they block a punt, they score, and by the middle of the first quarter, it's already over. It's over. Now, when Pat coached, he didn't wear headphones, you know, like headsets like coaches do. He sat and he wandered up and down the sidelines and he'd yell and scream at people. <laughs> That's what coaches do. But he'd usually, but he did it without the headset. One thing that was really unique, I was the sideline guy that year, and Pat would talk to us live on the air during games. So, you know, if something happened, he'd come over and say, what happened right there? That's what we had called right here. And then that knucklehead there, he did this. And, you know, he'd tell us what happened or what was about to happen. Or he'd come up and say, watch this, what we're going to do right here. And so Pat kept looking at me. We're at Missouri. It's cold. It's raining. I didn't have rain gear. I'm freezing. And I had to stand in one place. I couldn't move because he wanted to know where I was. Like I'm hard to find, right? <laughs> but I'm standing right there at the 20-yard line. And it's only the middle of the second quarter now. And it's just awful. And Pat's kneeling just about right there. And he keeps looking at me like this. I thought, okay, he's going to come say something, right? And finally, about two plays later, he comes up and he just grabs me like this. And he looks at me and goes, are you cold? I said, what? He said, you cold? You look cold. Hey, hey, get Rick a jacket. And he storms down the sideline yelling at T.J. Bro, T.J. Bro, who was our, our equipment guy, get Rick a jacket. Rick's cold and he's wet. Get him a jacket. The players are running back and forth. Touchdowns are being scored. He's after a jacket. And he got me a jacket. And I later got fired wearing that jacket. I haven't worn it since. Honestly, he gave me a jacket. So we go in at halftime, and there's double doors at Missouri. You go in the first set of doors, small room. You go in the second set of doors. We go in the first set of doors. Pat never went in the second. He stayed out there with me. I hate it here. Don't you hate that? Boy's cold out there. You like that jacket? Looks good on you, too. Is that right? Now? About two minutes to go. Officials, coach, time to go. All right. Let's go. Back outside. Never went in the locker room. That was Pat Jones, and I loved, loved the year I had down there with Pat. And that's, that's Pat, isn't it? To a T, that is Pat. Loved being around him. It just, those, but those are the guys that make it worthwhile. And for every one of those, you get the other side. You know, you get the, uh, many of you here might like Bobby Knight's winning record, but as a human when he was coaching, he wasn't the best guy. So you get some of those kinds of people. or some. Of, you know, what's interesting is I covered a lot of Major League Baseball, Superstars were great guys. Will Clark, George Brett got to know me when I covered spring training. As a matter of fact, George would call me by name. We'd sit and talk in the dugout. One time, John Wathen tried to turn a single into a double at spring training. And I was actually sitting in the dugout with the Royals, and, and George gets up and yells, What do you look like, Rick? <laughs> Wathen knew, too. <laughs> He, well, as he came back, he, 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 right. anyway, so you get those kinds of guys, and you have, you have, you have a, really a lot of fun, but then there are the really special moments, and in uh, 19, I think it was 91, my oldest daughter's had 10 brain tumor surgeries, and she's, uh, she's had a very difficult struggle since she was four years old. She's 32 years old. She's a miracle. Twice they've told us that she wasn't going to survive, and twice excellent doctors have saved her. She's on an experimental medicine now that keeps these tumors at bay. She has three currently. Uh, and she still lives with us, but she works and she drives and she functions and all those things. And she has some deficit, but she is um, she's just exactly what you'd think. She's a miracle. Well, because of my experience with her during the very first fight night, you remember fight night? You know, all the boxers would come in. Well, the very first fight night, they brought in Muhammad Ali. Well, I got a call from the Siegfrieds that said, I want you to be the media guy who spends the day with Ali. Because of what you've been through with your daughter, I know you're going to be sensitive to, what he, to his problem, to his Parkinson's. So I spent the entire day privately with, with Muhammad Ali. And what was really interesting, did everybody, everybody remember those first cell phones that were about this big? I mean, the bag phones and the blocks, and you could really, you could hurt a guy with those things, right? And they were really big. So we're in, we're in the limousine, we're going place to place, and he and I are there by ourselves. And when he was first medicated, he was a little drowsy, but as that started to wear off, he was really himself. And he was sitting across from me, it was just him and I, and I had to do the, the noontime sports. Now, God granted me two things, an appetite and a memory. And, you know, so I'm 50-50. <laughs> so I just pick up the phone, I dial the radio station, and I did the sportscast without looking at anything because that's just how I do it. 
And I'm going to do my Muhammad Ali impression, and it's really bad, but I love doing it, so, so humor me, okay? So I'm in, I'm in the limousine, and I finish, and I hang up, and he looks at me, and he says, oh, were you just on the radio? And I said, yes, sir, I was. And he said, you're not as dumb as you look, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Again, guilty. And I said, well, I hope not, sir. And he looked and he said, are you married? And I said, yes, sir. And he said, call your wife. So I dialed my wife. Now, she knows where I am. So I hand him the phone. I can hear it ringing. And I hear her say hello. And he says, Christine, this is the greatest of all time. <laughs> How many of you have had Muhammad Ali call your wife at home? Show of hands. <laughs> Just me? Weird. Wow. Had a nice little conversation with her, and he's finished, and he said, I just want to know one thing. And she said, yes, sir. And he said, who's this blonde with your husband? <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Not the blonde, but a story. And I'll tell you one last thing before I'll take some questions. And this one is really funny, and many of you may have heard this. And I heard Mickey Mantle tell this story three times. So I'm going to assume that it's true. And how many of you, of course, you know Mickey was from Oklahoma, right? From up near by, by Commerce. Did you know that he came back almost every year with Billy Martin and Whitey Ford? They were good friends of his, right? So, yeah, you're, you're nodding. You know the story, right? They came back quite, a, quite often, and Billy and Whitey and Mickey would go hunt, and they would go fish, and they'd do all kinds of things. Now, I heard him tell the story word for word three times. So Mickey says, and we're doing this on the air one, one night at his restaurant when it first opened by 71st and Yale. He says he had a, a friend, and he went up to ask if he could hunt on the lease. And the, and the friend says, yes, but... I've got a very, very, one of my very favorite old horses is, is very sick, and I don't want to put him down. I can't do it. Will you shoot him for me? And, and Mickey says, sure, I'll, I'll do that. Well, so Mickey goes back to the car, and he thinks he'll get it Whitey, and he'll get it Billy Martin. Now, you guys know Billy Martin, right? Like you have to egg Billy Martin along. So he goes back to the car, and he's cussing, and he's, and he's that, that SOB, he won't let me, he won't let us out here. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go shoot his horse. <laughs> So Mickey gets out, and he goes over to the fence line, and he lays that gun down, bang! And then he hears, bang! And he looks over, and Billy Martin says, I got one of his cows. <laughs> I can see it being real. <laughs> and from Mickey's face, I, could, I think I could tell it was real as well. Those are some of the things that happen when you, do what I, when you get to do what I do. Of course, I've witnessed the other side of it in those, in those hurricanes and tornadoes and in, at 9-11, but all of them are humbling, and all of them are the reasons that we do what we do and that I just accidentally got into this job. Uh, but because I am a sports guy, a scuba instructor, and many other things, if you have questions about anything happening in sports or anybody wants to learn to be certified, I can't do it right here, but I can tell you about it. So if anybody has questions or anything, yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, I've covered the, I covered the, we covered the conventions in Cleveland. We also covered the conventions in, uh, in Denver eight years ago. Uh, De Cleveland was a little different. Uh, it was a little more subdued. We really thought that the protesters were going to be a thing, obviously, and it was not that long after what had happened in Dallas. But there were law, there was law enforcement from every state there, and that's always the case. But here's what was different this year. I, every year I spend 10 days in California. It's one of my favorite places. I love L.A. I love to go diving in Catalina. Uh, and I'm, from, I'm familiar with some of their law enforcement um, because I got to know some of the guys that were divers there. Well, any time in Cleveland that anything started to happen, the California Highway Patrol showed up. And they showed up looking like Bane from Batman. They had on the big black suits. They had guns front and back and the big helmets and those kinds of things. And when those dudes showed up, everybody got quiet. And it was never really a protest group protesting, say, you know, it was not anarchists protesting the media or any of those kinds of things. It was protest groups who would start to get together. And then CHP would show up, and it got really quiet. I mean, it wasn't Barney Fife. Uh, inside the arena was a little bit subdued most of the time. I think there was, a, there was a feeling of not knowing whether they should be excited, not knowing whether they should, you know, exactly how they should take it. And, of course, we met a lot of people who don't like Mr. Trump. We lot of, met a lot of people who do. And we met a lot of people who are undecided. Uh, it was, I love covering conventions, the energy. It's like covering a game. When I go to broadcast a game, everybody there has a side. Everybody there is passionate. I mean, the same thing happens when you go to a convention. And I will tell you this, I know that this is a conservative state, but I will tell you this, the Democrats are a lot more fun to cover. Because <laughs> for them, for the Republicans go to work, the Democrats go to party. I mean, they bring out the Hollywood people and wear the goofy hats and all that kind of weird stuff. 
But I'll tell you, for any of you that are conservatives who wonder about their, their, those other guys, let me tell you a story about that. We're in Denver in 2008, and they had, you couldn't just throw things away. No, no. You couldn't throw things away. There were recycle bins, and there were like seven of them. There was a paper, and there was a plastics, and there was a this, and there was a that, and you had to be very specific, and they'd yell at you. Well, we get there at 2 in the morning to start our morning show, which means we're getting up at, you know, 12 at the hotel, which means you sleep about an hour and a half a night at a convention, and that's the way that works. So we are, we're going at 2 in the morning, and I, I'd just gotten yelled at the day before because I threw away what looked like a plastic cup. Well, it wasn't plastic. It's made of corn. And I said, I assure you, if I butter this, this is not going to taste good. So I don't know that you're telling me the truth, but no, it's made of corn. You have to throw it in that bin. So at 2 o'clock in the morning, we show up, and they're emptying all the bins into the same trash truck out back. <laughs> Posers. Uh, down the hall on the left. Oh, there's a question. Sure, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> you know the best thing about Joe? I've worked with three morning guys in my entire life. John, uh, Joe Kelly for a brief period of time, and uh, now, of course, uh, Dan Potter. And the great, the great thing about John is he, you knew exactly where you stood with him at every moment. He was not shy about telling you that he thought you were an idiot or you weren't an idiot with me, mostly idiot. Um, and, and so I kind of agree. I like that. I don't like having to, you know, kind of work your way around the edges of a person. That's not me. Just tell me what you think and what I need to do, and we'll go forward. And, and people who know me like Jane, you know that, right? I'm pretty straightforward. If you don't like what I'm doing, tell me how to do it differently, and we'll do that. And John did that. So I have a great respect for John. And he had, the, he had a wonderful knowledge for knowing what was going to make people mad. If it was going to twerk him off, then he knew that he knew where to climb, and he knew which side it had to be on, which for John was the opposite side, no matter where the other side was, just to get people worked up. But that's good radio, and he was very good at that. Yes, sir? Uh, I would tell him to, want, uh, to, to look where the checks are cashed. You know, I, I understand. And I was going to say, you know, you guys are already one up on the NFL because during God Bless America, everybody stood. Uh, I agree with his right to have free speech. Absolutely. That's what one of the things this country was founded on. I think he's misguided from the standpoint of you do have to understand who's supporting you. Colin Kaepernick has a right to say what he wants to say, and if he wants to sit there during the national anthem, he can. I have the right to tell him I think he's not right. I have the right to tell him I think he's not thinking about it correctly. I absolutely understand anyone who feels oppressed trying to come out from under that. I can't tell you if he's oppressed or if, or if that, that's happened or not. I'm a white guy. That's just all, I'm a fat white guy. I mean, who, yeah, who opposes fat white guys? Nobody. <laughs> I mean, we're pretty harmless. I've tried to get patted down at an airport. They won't do it. <laughs> Slipped them cards, all kinds of stuff. No interest. I did see him make um, a, a guy of a different ethnicity, I won't mention what, at 92 years old in a wheelchair on oxygen stand up to be searched. Uh, maybe that's maybe that's selective. I don't know. Uh, all I can tell you is I think that you need, you need to understand where your money's coming from, where your support's coming from, and maybe rethink that. If you want to protest that, maybe that's not the way. It wasn't that flag, which is a symbol of this nation, that did that to you. That flag is a symbol of those people who came here to be free and to have the opportunity to have those rights. I don't think the flag or the anthem itself is what you should be um, protesting. That'll never happen again, by the way. Thank you. Yes, sir. What are your thoughts on Coach McDermott? I love him. He is just the best guy. You know, because I, am, I get a chance to be in the locker room afterwards. You know, I've done Tulsa football for 28 years. They know I'm actually part of it. You know, I'm not the media. I'm their broadcaster. So if you ever listen and think he's being a homer, well, yeah. <laughs> of course I am. It's not where my paycheck comes from. But, yeah, I love these people. It's, my wife went to school there. It's how I met her. It's been so important to my family and, and, and to me. He is a wonderful guy, and to be in the locker room with him and watch that passion from him, my goodness, is he passionate. He's pretty composed out front. I've seen him cry in the locker room in front of the guys. I've seen him hug guys. I've seen him want to kick guys in the rear. He's smart. He's fast-moving. He's passionate. I, I just hope we can keep him for a while. But you know when you're Tulsa, you're not supposed to keep him for a long time. You're supposed to keep him until he's good enough or until he makes enough or somebody offers him enough to go to the next job. And I'm never, ever going to blame a guy for doing that. I think that's stupid. So if somebody comes to you and offers you another million dollars to do what you're doing somewhere else, you're going to tell them no in principle? You're not. And why do we expect him to do that, or anybody else for that matter? So what I want is the very best of him while we have him. And then one day, if Tulsa decides 
that they want to be a 75 to 100,000 seat stadium, Oklahoma, Texas A&M, Oklahoma State, they'll do that and they'll make the money to keep those coaches. Until then, keep them as long as you can. That's all you can ask and for them to do the best they can while they're here. Love them. I think I'm done. So with that case, I'm going to hand that back over to the guy in charge and say thank you very much for your time and for your patience. So I, I have a program in mind, uh, David. We need the guy, the roughneck coach, and Rick, and we just let them turn them loose. <laughs> you know, remember the roughneck guy that talked about the bar talk from England? Uh, we have a gift that we're going to give to our adoptive school, Celia Clinton, in lieu of a speaker gift, and it's a book, and today's book is U.S. Road Trip Atlas, and actually Tulsa's in here, so... Thank you very much for inscribing a note in this, and we'll give it to our elementary school. So if I could get, uh, and also we want to recognize our volunteers this morning. Their names are on the screen. Without their help, we couldn't pull off this program. And we do have an announcement if David Mompers here, if he could uh, announce about Business Visitation Day. Thank you, Mr. President. Okay, uh, Business Visitation is going great. So we've got a lot of businesses signed up. We're going to cut off the uh, signups on Tuesday. So if you're a business and you have not signed up and you intended to, do it, do it, do it. We are cutting off the nonprofits. We've got lots of those. Uh, in all respect to them, we need more businesses that are profitable business people. So if, if you, <laughs> well, we've got a good turnout. Thank you, nonprofits, but I need some more businesses. Okay? Tuesday, cut off. Thank you. <laughs> I've always enjoyed the nonprofits myself. Uh, but yes, anybody that has a business that wants to show it off, this is a good time to uh, show off your business. Now, if we can have Sarge back up here. Is the bidding closed on the tie, or are we done with that? You know, we're done with that. And I know okay. these people have had all the Catherine they want today. But, uh, <laughs> but we are going to do the drawing. And on a serious note, remember, the money that we raise uh, at the first part of the program is for our club foundation. The money from our game that we play is for Rotary International. Both groups doing great things. <coughs> so let me just get choked for a minute. Okay, today the pot is $790. So I'm thinking everybody didn't bring a dollar today, but I'll forgive you, you can bring it next week, okay? So we're gonna have Rick draw our winning number. Okay, if you draw a number, if your number's drawn, hustle up and we'll draw the card. And if you draw the card, which is a joker, you win. <laughs> okay, our number is 247759. I could have been a bingo caller, 759. And here we go. All right. We have a winner. I'm the eternal optimist, Kathy. I buy tickets to just leave them there, and I wait for nobody to stand up, and then I'll... We, we, we wouldn't let you win anyway. This is Bob Riley. Bob, Bob. It's so good to meet you. I mean, I don't think we've ever had a handshake. Me and William. Because he sits in the back. <laughs> okay, so I've cut the cards like several times because somebody said that people look at them. So, all right. Too big to fan out, so just one dig in. Time. Cut them one more time. Quit looking. <laughs> you got two cards. Two, well, it's a tough one, whatever it is. Okay. Two, uh, the, well, they're both the two of diamonds and three of diamonds. We're going to pull both of them out. How about that? But look how skinny the deck is getting. Thank you so much for playing. Do what? What's the bottom? Oh. <laughs> that, was the that proves it's the there. Card. There you go. And it's you all there. wondered. Thank you very much for showing that off on the bottom. That's why we cut the cards. And thank you all for participating in that. The cards are getting fewer and the pot is getting bigger. So bring your dollars next week. Again, our upcoming, upcoming program, September 7th, is a car show with Ken Busby talking about Route 66. The 14th is a rock and roll concert with Sean Latham talking about Bob Dylan Archive. And September 21st is Driving Miss Daisy Car Day, Concour for the Cure. I encourage you all to tell your friends about Rotary and the good works that we do in our community. We got to celebrate some of that today. Thank you very much. I have a committee. And with my butter knife, we are adjourned.